today we explore Penang, known as a food lover's paradise. But there is so much more to this city, with a lot of historical sites, cool bars, crazy museums, mansions everywhere, artwork, coffee culture, terrifying zombies, and of course the amazing food. So let's explore this big, beautiful island. Six meals a day. Yeah, holiday eating. It's my car. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, is it actually really? Like, that's the one. <laughs> That was amazing. Uh, coffee scene Penang. I'm super excited. The first one here, one of the best coffees I had in a long time. And the food there was awesome. So, you know, throughout this episode, we're going to go to a bunch of cafes. Georgetown, one of the most colorful and vibrant city we have been to so far, was founded in 1786. To me, it's a melting pot of different cultures living peacefully together. Being a UNESCO World Heritage City, there is a lot of places to experience culture, food, history, and life in Georgetown. And one way to do this is just by walking around and admiring the many painted murals and artwork all around the city. get to the market but we just keep stopping because there's so much graffiti like cool murals and it's only a 15 minute walk to the market <laughs> this is really cool There are many places to sample Malaysian cuisine in Penang, and being one of the food capitals of the world, you are definitely spoiled for choices. If you want to try a few local dishes, then maybe come to this street. Just look for the guy eating sendol on the wall. In fact, just look around and you'll see everyone eating sendol. This amazing dessert is a tasty mix of fresh coconut milk, shaved ice, palm sugar, red beans, and my favorite part, the green jelly noodles. On a very hot day here in Penang, it's by far the best pick-me-up. It says you have to stir it. Yeah, you have to stir it before you eat it. Oh, yeah, that's nice. Wow. That's actually really surprisingly like not too sweet, but a coconut in. It's delicious. We had to we tried it before, but we didn't stir it. Yeah. Remember? No, you didn't stir it. Don't, don't, put, don't write me in your <laughs> amateur ways. I <laughs> don't <laughs> know either. That's really good. Yeah.
There are also plenty of things to try on this street, but definitely go to this laksa place. Here you can try a local Assam laksa. What makes it different to other laksas is the tamarind based soup instead of the coconut curry style base. You can also try here chakwe tao, a popular wok fried noodle dish here in Malaysia. Spicy? No, it's just like really tamarind. It tastes tamarind, like a lot of tamarind. Sourness and sweetness. It's not, it's not spicy at all, like mm. not spicy at all. Yeah, it's like a creme brulee. Yeah. That's cool. Nice? Mm. <laughs> That's cool. The Rainbow Sky Bridge provides breathtaking views of the city and it's the highest viewing deck located right in the heart of Georgetown. Just keep in mind you have to check the weather in advance because the bridge will be closed if there is heavy rain. Yeah, I think you got it. There you go, you made a wish. <laughs> I get one shot. Now, if you're looking to step out of your comfort zone, then check out the gravity walk. As you can see, you go through a set of challenges while you casually walk around the edge of this building. It really does look like fun, but I'd rather watch from the inside. <laughs> if you're visiting Malaysia, you're definitely going to eat some delicious food. So you may as well learn a few things about what you're eating. Wonder Food Museum displays a fantastic food culture here in Malaysia. With so much different styles of food to try, you will have to eat the Malaysian way. Six meals a day. Malaysians eat six meals a day. Yeah, all day eating. It's my car. <laughs> <laughs> That's the dream. <laughs> This museum consists of two floors. The lower level contains detailed displays of Malaysian food and where to find it. And of course, some photo opportunities with a meaningful message behind it. Even while you're using the restroom, there is a friendly reminder to always wash your hands. Yeah, it feels like I'm in um, Alice in Wonderland or something. <laughs> like
On the second floor is where you can see the food history in Malaysia. Like in the old days, it was more common to see local people walking around with the entire restaurant on their shoulders or their bike. As you continue through the second floor, you'll get some much needed knowledge on durian and of course more photo opportunities. But what I really like is that they display some interesting facts about food in general too. I had no clue that a small mammal called a civet would eat cherries, dump them out and then the droppings would be used to make a coffee. What's even more surprising is the price, $160 per pound, now that's some expensive coffee. Overall, this museum is truly amazing from funny facts to photo opportunities and meaningful messages that remind us about the importance of kindness and giving. This museum is worth a visit, but it also makes you hungry. That was a cool food museum, once a lot. <laughs> now we're gonna go check out a mansion. That's it. This 19th century mansion was once owned by Chung Ken Kui, the largest tin mine owner. He was also well known for his generosity, donating to many schools, temples and charities. In fact, he had such an impact on Georgetown, two streets are actually named after him. Eventually his mansion was turned into this Peranakan museum you see today. What I found really interesting in Peranakan culture is that they can predict if their child is going to be a boy or a girl. So on their wedding night, a hen and a rooster will be placed in a basket underneath their bed. Now, in the morning, they will be released, and whichever comes out first will determine if you're having a boy or a girl. But what if they emerge at the same time? I guess we'll never know. This is truly an amazing mansion to explore. And right next door, you can try out some traditional Peranakan food. Coconut light chocolate. Wasn't that like a chocolate or chocolate museum you saw? Yeah. <laughs> How was it? 
tasty, but spicy. Tasty, but spicy. <laughs> As you probably know by now, we love coffee, and in Malaysia, there is one coffee style you must try. This coffee shop has been around since the 1950s, when the original owner was riding his bike around town, selling coffee to the locals. Hainese coffee is very unique because the method of roasting the beans is very different to any other style. For example, one part of the method is to run the coffee beans through a caramel, giving it a sweet taste. This coffee is some of the strongest I've ever tasted, so make sure to only have one. Super strong. I thought so. <laughs> it's delicious, but wow, it's like it's like perfect. It's like a strong. <laughs> I'm so away. One sip. <laughs> As you explore Georgetown, there is one area that you definitely won't miss. With vibrant colorful flowers, blasting music, clothing and jewelry stores everywhere, and of course the amazing food too. Little India in Georgetown is an unforgettable experience. There is so much history here. This is actually one of the oldest Indian communities in Malaysia. So you might want to stop by and grab a bite to eat. Oh, like the bitch meat. The sugar sweet? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, straight away though, you know when you get a samosa, it's like paper thin, kind of like origami paper. This is like the opposite, it's so much like filling in this and it's crispy, it looks good. This is spicy, they're really tasty. This is crunchy too, that's delicious. Oh yeah, you gotta try this. It's so colorful. Little Indian is just one big colorful party. I don't know, it's like <laughs> yeah. I love it. An entrance. <laughs> Hello. Hello, welcome. Hello. Mm -hmm. So first ah. we have goods from Malaysia, China, Egypt, Europe, Japan, and then we have Halloween. Now this isn't a haunted house, so you won't have to worry about jump scares from the staff who work here. But the atmosphere alone makes this place quite creepy. Even the toilets aren't a place to escape from the horrors. Spooky toilet. So this three-story haunted museum depicts various countries, ghosts, ghouls and monsters. For example, this terrifying guy is what scares Malaysian kids. Specific goes for the, you know, Europe. Egypt, China, it's cool to think that, you know, every country has their ghosts. Their it's, cultures are yeah. what's scary what's for them. Scary, yeah. right? Or in Japan, this weird frog boy thing can attack you when you're having a swim. And even a Chinese hopping vampire can be lurking in the shadows. But don't worry, you just need a wooden sword made from a peach tree to stop them. You have to do the hard. The nipples. That's that's the noise. <laughs> 
Each room was themed out very well and it's really cool to see all the different stories from each country. Also, don't forget about the top floor where you can get a glimpse of life in a zombie apocalypse and you can reenact your favorite zombie film. That's so smart. She scared me when we planted. I'm still scared. Oh, I'm such an idiot. <laughs> yeah, this is an amazing experience. There's all, like a lot of crazy museums here in Penang, all these different varieties for tourists. And I have to say, this is probably one of my favorite ones. I actually was really surprised by this place, and I really recommend you go check it out. It's a lot of fun. <laughs> It's what you want. It's a heaven. <laughs> Cake and coffee. Nice. Confidence for free. I'm Malaysian, so you wearing that. In the 1970s, the Hind Bus Company had its distinctive blue buses transporting the local Penang people. However, it eventually went out of business and the blue bus was no more. So now this old bus depot is a place that helps support local artists by providing them a creative space to show their talents. From musicians, art shows, cool cafes and designers, it's really a wonderful place to relax and grab a coffee. If you're looking for a quiet drink with some colourful history, then check out the Blue Mansion. This 130-year-old mansion is now a boutique hotel with a nice cosy bar. The mansion's beautiful blue colour is formed by mixing lime with a natural blue dye taken from the indigo plant. On the upper level, there is a small gallery that tells the story of this mansion and its original rich owner, Zhong Fat Zhe, also known as the Rockefeller of the East. If only I had a cool nickname like that, but at least I can have a drink and admire how cool this mansion is. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> pull, pull. Ah, there you go. <laughs> Thank you. The best cocktail ever. Hi. Delicious.
Next up is Penang's first ever speakeasy joint. Magazine 63 is a hidden bar, but due to its popularity, it's really not that difficult to find. With a live DJ and showy drinks served at the table by these awesome bartenders, it's definitely a great way to start the night out. Yeah, here we are, War Museum. It is <laughs> huge. A lot of climbing, she was saying, and also ghosts in some bunkers. A few customers said they heard someone saying, help me in crying. Yeah, so. help me, help me. <laughs> Let's investigate. <laughs> I hope you will capture something. The Penang War Museum is definitely an interesting place to visit. Even though the location is quite far from all the other tourist hotspots, it's worth coming here. This museum is spread out over 20 acres of land, so you'll definitely be walking around a lot and sometimes crawling and climbing. Seeing cannons, bunkers, tunnels and lockup areas, this place has stood the test of time because these are not replicas. You can actually see remnants of bullet holes and destroyed walls. Now the history of what took place here is quite surreal. You'll learn some sad stories of what local Malays had to go through when the Japanese invaded and took this fortress from the British in World War II. The cruelty that took place here is tough to take in, but of course we can always learn from the past. War is never a good thing, and this museum is definitely a reminder of that. This floating mosque is a stunning local gem in Penang and it's the first one of its kind to be built in Malaysia. Although it's called a floating mosque, it's actually built on stilts. But if you visit during high tide, it'll appear to be floating on water. Like most places in Malaysia, people are friendly and more than happy to share some insights of this mosque. You can walk around the entire place and soak in some beautiful views of the sea. So if you're on this side of the island, stop by this amazing place. Yeah, as well, enjoy the view. <laughs> it's beautiful.
right, here we are at the beautiful floating mosque and um, it is absolutely amazing. You definitely should come here, surrounded by water, so peaceful. Um, just letting you know, you can wear shoes outside around, but when you want to go inside, you have to take your shoes off and they'll provide you with some clothing if, like me, you wore shorts and you need to cover yourself. Such a nice beach, right? Yeah, it's really nice. I know like Penang is known for its uh, food in Georgetown, but like this beach is actually really nice. <laughs> and it's really quiet. <laughs> um, coming here early in the morning, probably the best time to come. <laughs> yeah. The Batu Ferengi beach is where most people visit to get away from the city area. And it's quite close to Georgetown. Since we lived across the road, we came here quite a bit. The beach stretches over three kilometers and there's a lot of hotels all along this strip. Here you can do all sorts of water sports activities like jet skiing or paragliding and even horse riding. But for me, the best thing about visiting this place is definitely the sunsets. The other main attraction is of course at night. This area right next to the beach turns into a daily night market, running all the way down the main street. Here you can grab a bite to eat like these super awesome pancakes. This is Nutella and cheese and it's surprisingly really good. Best combination ever. But the main reason to come here is to buy all things you never knew you wanted. From clothing, arts and crafts, keychains, electronics, and even anime stuff. It's just really endless. Just be prepared to barter for a better price, or else you'll end up paying way too much. Overall, this was a nice area to stay in Penang. And if you're looking for something different from Georgetown, then check this area out. <laughs> I really hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.